What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve and you're watching one of my narrated Wi-Fi battle videos. I finally have a good 20 Pokemon EV train and, and have all their moves and everything, so definitely add me on Skype. Come and join the little Skype chat we have going on. It's fun. People are trading. New ideas, that type of thing. But anyways, though, today's match is a battle I had against Echo Reaver. Uh, from my Twitter, I will leave his Twitter handle in the description. But he was just like, hey, up for a quick battle, so I obliged, man. I got to use, this is kind of the team that I have in my battle box ready to go, just generally if I ever get any passerby challenges. And uh, it works pretty well, I enjoy using it. But um, first up we have an expert belt, Noivirn. I figured he might switch into Azumarill here, but he didn't know that I was expert belted, so I figured I could t catch it off guard with a Hurricane after it switched in. I end up missing the Hurricane, but he actually predicts me to um, switch out into something else, um, likely my Talon Flame, because I will resist the Fairy type move, and he goes for Waterfall. Now expecting him to go for the Fairy type move, play rough, I decided to go into my Venusaur, which big shoutouts to Nox for helping me come up with this EV spread for this Venusaur. Um, it takes hits amazingly well, even without going Mega, uh, and that just really just helps. Um, so now, expecting my poison type attack, my opponent goes out into his Aegislash uh, to be immune to it because, naturally, steel is immune to poison. And I expected that, so I just went for Sleep Powder there. Even if he stayed in with the Azumarill, I knew it wouldn't likely have Sap Sipper because it's just so much more advantageous to run huge power on Azumarill. So now I know he has one guaranteed turn of sleep. It's time to go out into Talon Flame here. We're, this is actually my Jolly my jolly Swords Dance Talon Flame. I have a Jolly Swords Dance and I have an Adamant Bulk Up. And I've been trying to see which one is really working out a little bit better. And uh, But right now, uh, we have Jolly Swords Dance. And that's good because it helps speeds those uh, Adamant variants that use Bulk Up. And of course, it's also good against um, Aegislash just because um, it can... Swords Dance on the turns where it tries a King Shield, like right here, and since I'm not trying to hit it with the contact move, I don't lose, I don't sh get my attack sharply decreased, and um, that's just generally good, and also for things that are using bulk up, I can out damage them after a couple of hits. Um, and this, uh, the bad thing about running Jolly is I ended up investing in max speed, max attack, which means I'm not quite as bulky as my Adamant build, um, but that's okay, here I still take a... Uh, a stab shadow sneak very well and I'm able to finish him off with the plus six flare blitz there's a, no way he would have lived that without having a focus sash uh, but now I'm going to run rampant on his team a little bit as he figures out what he's going to do about my talent flame he actually goes out into Alakazam and mega evolves into mega Alakazam with Alakazite which is the first time I've seen mega Alakazam but um, I don't think that he realized that I had Gale Wings on my Talon Flame. And of course, Gale Wings, it gives uh, plus one priority to all flying type moves. And that's going to be Brave Bird. That's going to be Roost. Uh, Acrobatics, if you choose to use that on your Talon Flame, all those are going to get plus one. And since now I'm in a higher priority bracket than him, unless he was using a flying type move of his own, he would then outspeed me because we're in the same, flying, um, the same priority bracket. But since he's not... He's just, just going to go down to a plus six Brave Bird there. Um, now he notices that I have Gale Wings, and he goes out into his own Talon Flame. And here I actually thought I could... I don't actually know why I thought I could live a Brave Bird. That was really kind of silly of me to go for that. I really should have just uh, suicided and taken him out, or even switched right into my Slur Puff, which we'll see in just a little bit here. But, um... He does manage to take me out, which is unfortunate, although I guess it does make for a much better battle, generally. Uh, I go on to my Greninja, and um, I knew I probably outsped him. I did not think that he had uh, the Gale Wings ability, and so I just decided to go for Water Shuriken, uh, and he brings in a Zoom Roll, who is not really going to take anything from it. I w I, I'm not really worried about a Zoom Roll 
right now, even if it has really high attack stats, even with the choice band, um, it can't really do anything to Venusaur. It really needs Ice Punch to, to do that. Uh, and even with Ice Punch, Venusaur only takes half damage from Ice Punch. So I don't care about Azumarill, to be completely honest. Um, I did go out into Venusaur last time, so in case he tried to predict me going out into Venusaur, I went out into my defensive wall Slurpuff, which is max HP, max physical defense. And he misses the play rough, but just based on how much this waterfall does, he it, it really didn't matter. I have Wish Protect draining kissed while holding the big root which means I'm getting around 90% recovery I believe and uh, uh, my final move is of course toxic and um, shout outs to better ed than smeg for mentioning toxic I was running aromatherapy for a while but I, I never really used it whereas the opportunities for toxic abound here especially when you're using wish and protect but uh, anyways though I take that hit very very well the Draining Kiss is going to get me back a lot of HP, even though it doesn't do that much damage. I get back almost all the HP that I do in damage. Um, so, Azumarill having a high HP stat means I'm going to get a lot back, and of course the Big Root compounds the amount that you're going to get back. I would normally have Leftovers on uh, Slurpuff, but I was trying it out on Talent Flame, as you noticed earlier. Now, he actually is going to bring back out his Talon Flame, noticing that I'm probably just going to continue to wish and protect and that whole gamut there. I actually haven't used protect because I didn't see any reason to show him that I had that move yet. He starts using bulk up. And, of course, me, I, I want to see how well Solar Puff can really take attacks. Uh, I'm going to go for Toxic here because I figured I could take a plus one Brave Bird and then I could protect on the next turn as he tries to Brave Bird me or Flare Blitz me or whatever, and then he take more Toxic damage. So now I use Protect for the first time. I didn't use it earlier, this is the first time he saw it, but I guess he was expecting that because he used Bulk Up right there, so that was a very good prediction on my opponent's part. And uh, so that means now I have to face down a plus two Stab, Brave Bird, or a Flare Blitz. Not, not really uh, something that I expected Slurpuff to take. That is a very strong and equal hit. And Talonflame's attack is double, but it doesn't even bring my Slurpluff down into the red. I was really impressed with how well uh, Hostess took that attack. So that's where the cream filling is. It's right there in front of your face, Fox. You had to ask. That's where it is. But knowing that, um, I I figure now he might actually roost up because I again thinking about the sets that I had. I figure now is a good chance to bring in my Greninja because then I could just um, Water Shuriken him afterwards. But he just goes for another Brave Bird, because I guess he just wanted to try it. I, that's really odd, because I could have just protected. Um, so either he predicted me to switch out, or he didn't care about his Talon Flame anymore. Either way, um, what's important is that I still had I still have um, my uh, Hostess Slurpuff around to wall things later on. Now, unfortunately, I miss yet another move with my uh, Novi Urn, which means it's just going to die without doing anything. It, it missed a Draco Meteor, um, and it missed a Hurricane. When it hits, it really knocks some holes in things, even without the Expert Belt boost. But, you know, if you don't hit, you don't really do any damage, so that's no good. But I'm able to go on to my Imposter Ditto here. I was very happy to find. I, it's just funny how much trouble I had to go through to get one in 5th Gen and some people being really awesome and just giving them to me, uh, whereas I just found a bunch randomly in my Ditto Friend Safari, and uh, so that's the thing. Of course, when you transform into Ditto, you only get 5 PP in each move, so I only have a limited amount of um, Dragon Pulses to use here, and uh, he goes out into his hair across here, not wanting to have his um, Dragology knocked out, and I figured uh, Hostess probably has done his job at this point, or done her job rather. Um, I, I wasn't expecting to take a hit unless he went for the Mega Horn, and I would resist that of course, or the Fighting type move. But he's not going to go against either of those against the Poison uh, Dragon type most likely. And now I'm figuring, okay, maybe I can just outspeed him now and hit him with a really powerful move, maybe his own Mega Horn or something like that. But it turns out that he is Scarf too, and we have a speed tie that he ends up winning. Unfortunado. So, um, at this point, I think all I have left is Venusaur. I have Venusaur and he has three Pokemon left. He has Dragalge, he has his Heracross, and uh, he has, uh, I think, the Azumarill. 
So I have to somehow power through all those. So I decided to go for a Leap Seed here. Heracross still had a good clip of HP left, so I wanted to um, be in a position where I could recover against it some. Uh, but him going out into Azumarill is fine by me because Azumarill has plenty of HP for me to take. So I'm going to get a decent amount of recovery from that. And then I was very surprised to see that I outsped it and I was able to hit it with a Sludge Bomb. My Venusaur is running on minus speed nature, so I wasn't exactly expecting to outspeed it. But that's fine by me. That probably means he's running on minus speed nature as well. I was very surprised to find that I outsped uh, Dragalge there with my minus speed nature because Dragalge is... It's slow, naturally, but most of them aren't carrying minus speed, so um, mo most of them are carrying modest or calm or bold, at least in my experience, in the ones that I've fought so far. Now, I was expecting to take this Mega Horn, and I didn't know how well, and I was looking at the damage, and I was like, oh wait, that was a crit? That means he had no chance to knock me out right there, he almost finished me off with a crit. But Mega Venusaur pulls through, and this is why Venusaur is the best Mega Pokemon, obviously. Uh, he's able to pull through and knock out the last three Pokemon there for the victory. So despite my misplays with my Talonflame and my misprediction bringing in my Greninja to his um, Talonflame, that battle actually ended up pretty well, pretty solid battle. So thank you very much, Echo Reaver, for the battle. Hopefully I'll get to have more with you. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day there. Be sure to come and add me on Skype there. Skype is Necrostevo. We can battle, we can trade, we can do all that good stuff that rivals do. So, you guys have a great day. Be sure to check out my um, walkthroughs on leveling up and EV training. I'm going to have a breeding guide up soon. Um, if you have any uh, ideas for guides that you would like to see, be sure to let me know. That way I can uh, consider making them. But be sure to go check those two out. I'll leave links to them in the description. And I will talk to you all later. Alright, see you guys.